I suppose firstly, I'd just like to say thanks for inviting me here today. It's great to see so many scientists in one room, and it's also really great to see how much the program has evolved uh, in the kind of seven years since I started it, and I was in a very similar position to yourselves today. So, my name's Dennis, and I lead a technology-focused program at the Health Innovation Network in South London. The Health Innovation Network is one of 15 academic health science networks across the country, and our mandate is to speed up the spread of value-adding technology and innovation into healthcare um, and wider social care organizations as well. So we serve a population of about three and a half million people. We work across about 55 member organizations, which are, uh, come from academia, the private sector, um, health and social care. And in terms of what I do specifically, my team really strives to improve the lives of people and patients through bringing in new innovative kind of evidence-based solutions into the NHS. Um, an example of one of the programs we have is the Innovation and Technology Payment Program, where we essentially give money out to providers to upgrade to newer equipment that has better evidence behind it. In terms of saving money, um, we try and tackle that through supporting organizations that we work with to improve their efficiency. And largely our focus is around digital improvement. So a few examples of some of the projects I have underway around trying to improve primary care through e-consultation or moving towards um, virtual appointments in outpatients clinics. So really support programs and projects like that. We also drive economic growth through working with entrepreneurs within the NHS and uh, working with uh, small to medium-sized enterprise companies um, that are UK-based and really trying to scale them up and get the value uh, for our patients in the country. Okay, so I'll try and keep this brief, but I just thought I'd go through a little bit of my journey to where I, where I am today. So like many of you here, I started off with a kind of science undergrad, um, scientific undergrad, and an MSc, and I think that just gave me a really good foundation on which to build. And I think the STP is a great way of kind of progressing that. I came here to Edgebaston, actually, when I finished my first MSc. I just lived down the road, and I worked for a medical device company who make uh, advanced hemodynamic monitoring systems. Um, my role there was to act as a product specialist and a trainer, so I ended up going around and seeing probably over 50% of the trusts in London, or sorry, in, in England and, and in Wales. And that was a really good experience because it really gave me some real oversight to what the NHS, NHS is like as a system. And I think my key reflections are, from the outside, the NHS is a hugely diverse and hugely complex entity. And trying to navigate your way through it can be really painful. It can present loads of challenges, but it also presents loads of opportunities to improve. I think my other real key reflection of working for the private sector was that at every moment, I had to justify the value that I was bringing to my organization. So it was KPIs, left, right, and center. And that's something I've really taken through to, throughout my career, and I think it's something really important, especially for us in the public sector. Really understand the value that you're creating. So luckily, I managed to win a place on the scientist training program. Um, I specialize in clinical engineering, and I could probably talk about this for an hour, so it's, I'll just give you a little whistle stop tour of some of the stuff I've done. So did a lot of techie stuff, built a lot of devices. The device on the screen to the left is a voice recognition switch that I developed for a specific patient in Birmingham that interacted with our home automation system. I also did a lot of work around software development and improving the processes within my department and decision-making processes within my department. But actually, when I kind of reflect back on the STP now, my main memories are all around patients and really working with really good people. So as much as the tech was really interesting and cool, it's the patients that I think I'll remember the most. And I'll share with you just one, one example of that. So when I started, I was doing technology assessments out in the community, and I spent an afternoon with a gentleman with motor neuron disease, kidding him out with some eye-tracking software on his laptop. And we had a great laugh. We had a really good uh, afternoon together, and I walked away very happy with that. Uh, a few weeks later, I got a letter in the post addressed to me, which I found a little bit peculiar, um, and it was from his wife and he had passed away the following day. And she said she was just so grateful that he spent his last day really happy, happier than she'd seen him in months. So I think that's 
that really kind of brought home the importance of what we do as healthcare scientists. And it's certainly something that I've reflected on a few times. So following from the S, uh, STP, I luckily got a job in my department in Guys and St. Thomas's as a clinical engineer. And again, I did loads of interesting tech stuff, got really involved in developing medical software, uh, CE marking medical software, all that sort of stuff. So really varied and interesting experience. One thing I did find as you go through that process, a lot of the systems you're trying to improve, you realize that you start hitting systemic barriers at senior levels in your organization. So I started getting frustrated, and that really led me to um, clinical leadership and trying to develop my clinical leadership skills. So I was luckily, luckily enough, I won a fellowship with Ruth Thompson, who's the scientific director for London in NHS England, and I spent a year with her doing a fellowship around trying to improve cancer diagnostics across London. And that was a really nice introduction to how to work at system level and how to utilize the skills that I gained as a scientist and apply them in areas that I kind of lacked that scientific rigor maybe in the past. So to wrap up, I'm conscious of time, that, that was a really good experience and it brought me to where I am now in the Health Innovation Network. I think I'll share some kind of broad advice with you, but I suppose first of all, just to, to um, signpost you to your AH, AHSN, your Academic Health Science Network, as I say, there's 15 of them. If you don't know who they are, you should go and find out who they are, because I think there's a lot of mutual benefit there. In terms of other advice, I think, I think Bernie's absolutely right. The key word um, that I'm feeling from her talk is excitement, and you guys should be excited as well, because you have three years to poke your nose into loads of different things and just be curious and satisfy your curiosity as scientists. So I think it's really about trying to make the most of that. The piece of advice I probably really emphasize is that You'll pick up loads of technical and uh, scientific knowledge, but you also need to think about building relationships with colleagues, because I think that's going to be equally important, as Bernie was saying, going forward, in order to change the system and make sure that, as clinical scientists and broader healthcare scientists, we get that kind of recognition at higher levels in the system. So I think, I think I'll leave it there. I think all those points are probably going to be remade several times, but I'm <coughs> happy to take any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks, Dennis. I mean, you've done, Dennis has done incredibly well. And actually, I'm very heartened to hear what you're saying that you, you understood because uh, about leadership, about communication. And I, you know, I can say, uh, as a scientist myself, you know, of, of many, many years, I didn't appreciate how important it is to communicate. So you're going to learn from the very beginning. It seems a funny thing for us to say and to be laboring on, on the first day you're all here. But it's a kind of given that you're all good scientists. You wouldn't have got onto this program otherwise. And it's a given that you're interested in science. And it's a given that you really you want to do well. But what we don't realize as scientists, you know, is, is what, what they, they instill into like our, our nursing colleagues and, and our medical colleagues from day one at university, but actually communication and that, that, that kind of um, understanding that you need to lead is unbelievably important. And you would say that. You, you, I mean, your examples are very good of that, uh, that you say that. And I thought it was really interesting when you said you, you met system barriers. Want to give us an example? Sure, yeah. So, I mean, funding is always a key one for us. Um, and when I was in my department in Guys and St. Thomas's, there was a real lack of funding for maintaining equipment across, um, across the trust. We had 55,000 pieces of equipment uh, and very little money to, to do anything with them. So actually trying to build a business case and bring it to our trust executive to say, actually, we need to completely remodel how, we're, how this is going to be funded. I mean, that was a huge struggle because we didn't have those links higher up yeah. in the organization to be able to lobby for, for our little piece because you have all these competing um, priorities at that level. And quite often, clinical engineering and, and medical physics don't have those, you know, the, the big consultant leader that yep. can go in and, and bang on the table for what they want. So mm. that, was, that was one where we managed to eventually overcome it. But. And you said um, that you said excitement is, is a very good... It's, it's a very good uh, feeling to carry with you when you get into the future. Again, would you want to elaborate on that? Because you must be excited now in the job you're doing now. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, it's kind of a bit of a dream outcome in, in, my, 
area because I get to be at the forefront of all emerging technologies and AI conversations. Um, and ev you know, every day is, there's something new that comes through. And I think just having the, the skills and that uh, kind of analytical approach that you develop through the training scheme and before really just adds to that and really kind of allows you to yeah. add value wherever you go.